Hello everybody, I'm Stefan, I'm an engineer here at Trainwall since mm, a little more than one year and I will talk to you about getting lightning fast with your test suit. Um, who here today wrote some code? Okay, good. <laughs> who here is a recruiter? No recruiters, good. <laughs> who here today broke a build? <laughs> who here today fixed the build that they broke? <coughs> Good. <laughs> who here waited for tests to run? <laughs> yeah. So, um, I will present you this project here. If you have a laptop and you want to follow along on your laptop, you can check out the code. Uh, so, on GitHub, Renuo Buchkenner. And so, uh, why is speed important in tests? Um, slow tests have very, very numerous uh, downsides. First of all, if the tests are slow, uh, chances are you won't run them because you don't want to, <laughs> right? Uh, uh, and when you have to run them because maybe you're, you know, working on that part of the code, um, you become frustrated because you have to wait maybe a lot of, of time to run. And also in the end, they can cost a lot of time. If you think about how much time you personally uh, lose on running tests, and then all the other developers that run the same tests will lose the same amount of time, and you multiply that for whatever time you work on this project, and it's, it's going to add up. And there are some reasons, usually they are quite common and uh, doesn't depend necessarily on the framework or language that you're using. Of course, here we will talk about Ruby and Rails, but uh, it applies also to other languages. And well, of course, the first one is if you have an incredibly complex database setup. If you have um, uh, to generate a lot of entities in your database, it can take a long time to, to just do that before you even run your, your test. Um, another reason is a call to external network service. If you don't uh, mock it because you don't want to or because you forgot to, it can slow down your, uh, your test quite a bit and also make it more brittle. It will break easily if this, this service is down for whatever reason. Um, also, if you have a lot of small expect expectations that are split over many tests. Now, um, the best practices say you have one expectation for every test, but it's not always true because sometimes the setup part of, of your test is so expensive that if you have too many tests uh, and so one expectation per test, it means you have to run it a lot of times and uh, this will slow you down. Another very common reason is you have the right, wrong kind of test. If you're using a feature test, a system test, a capybara test to test something that could be done in a unit test, well, you're, you're adding overhead without adding any value because you could test the same thing in another way that is much, much, much faster. Or also, it could be that the application itself is slow. If the application is slow, the test will inevitably be s slow as well. Um, a little bit about Buchkenner. Uh, it's a basically a book recommendation platform. It's uh, very simple, something I, I wrote in, in a couple of days. It's a simple Rails app. I'm using Bulma for some styling. Um, and I wrote some system tests to check some functionalities. Um, I wrote them expressly badly to demonstrate the point. And sometimes it's exaggerated, of course. Um, but it's always based on stuff I really found in some tests in some project somewhere <laughs> in another company, <laughs> of course. <laughs> no, but I mean, uh, this kind of stuff uh, happens, especially when the project becomes complex and you've been working at it for some time. Well, uh, you have code depth also in your tests, of course, and it shows up this way with slow tests in the end. So, 
let's run them. Um, so I am here in my project, okay, simple race project, and I can do bundle exec rspec. Okay, and well, you can already see <laughs> that it's not going very well. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know. <laughs> so, but the whole point is I want to try to show you how you can, well, improve a situation like this. And uh, yes have something more. I mean, if, if you had to wait this long every time you had to run the tests, I wouldn't run them. I would be the first one not to do it because it's it's so frustrating. You just, I mean, maybe in the end, if I have a bigger test suit, it will take the same time. But if I just see one dot that is there waiting, waiting and waiting, it, it gets really frustrating because I, I know that it can be, it can do better than that, All right? So 17 examples, they took 48 seconds I mean, 48 seconds is not the end of the world. If your whole test suit is 48 sec seconds, well, it's, it's good, in my opinion. But yes, in this case, 17 examples, maybe it's too much. So, um, okay, let's see. What is the first thing we, could, we can do? Well, we can actually show which, which tests are going slow. So it's just a configuration change. We will do it right away. So I have my code here uh, this goes into the spec helper and by default I don't know why but our spec uh, puts, puts it as commented away so uh, yeah okay yeah here <coughs> thank you okay so if I run it again we will see which tests are, are slow and how much actually because right now we, we only know that we take 48 seconds overall but maybe it's just a couple of tests that take this long and uh, the others are running fast i mean we already see here see the, the dots went much faster and probably it's because some tests only some tests are slow and uh, yeah <laughs> so how was your day <laughs> yeah, I actually forgot to put a slide, but I can try to make you visualize it. I'm sure you've seen it. It's a um, it's a it's a comic strip, and there's two guys playing on a chair. Oh, we even have a failure. <laughs> and so we we see here. First of all, uh, we have one test. It's f f almost 15 seconds. Right? No, uh, actually, this is the group, not the test. The test itself, where we have 15 seconds repeated twice, plus another test that takes 11 seconds. And, well, sometimes it's, you just need to open the test and you will see immediately what, what it is about. So I will take this one, user authentication spec, and who can spot the error? Sleep then. Dieci punti. <laughs> Very good. Sleep then. Uh, I know this seems absurd, but I actually found this in a test. Right? And uh, <laughs> this can happen because when you're doing a capybara test, maybe you have some timing issue with JavaScript and when you're debugging it, you will put the sleep or whatever, even though you're not supposed to, but then you forget about it and it's there. And But if you don't check in it, it, it stays there and, and will slow down your, your test suit. So we just remove this line and of course we already went down to 38 seconds overall. Good, but other times, so let's see uh, the other one. Let's take the book suggestion spec. Book suggestion spec. So, yeah, where's the error here? Yeah, you know, but you can't say it. <laughs> ah, 
Yes. Yes, that is one of the reasons. Uh, we have a create list with 20. Yeah, we have 20. 20 is a bit too much. And that, that is part of the problems you can get. I mean, maybe you're exaggerating with the data you're, you're generating. You don't need 20 unless, unless you, you need to really specifically test this amount. I would suggest, yeah, a two or a three. And I mean, if we run it now, I'm pretty sure we already went down a lot. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, okay, 10 seconds. Uh, I mean, it's not great for 17 examples. It's still half a second per, per test on average, even more, but compared to 50, <laughs> that's, that's already good. So uh, yes, what we can do next, I mean, uh, when it's obvious to look at it, well, it, it's easy, but uh, when it's not so obvious, I mean, the second example was already a, a bit tougher. Uh, yeah, he spotted the, the, the 20, but it's not the only problem we have there because it, I don't know if you know this, we still take three seconds to run the, that test. And um, so, we can use, we have a tool, it's called TestProf, and uh, we can use it to figure out other things that are not so obvious to, to discover. Uh, this gem is uh, basically, they, they collected a few of the profiling tools that we have in Ruby and Rails, and they put them together in a way that it's easy to use them. And it's not intended just for tests, uh, to be honest. but. Uh, so let's add it to the gem file. So we we will add here a group group test to gem uh, test. Right, I bundle install. And okay, so uh, let's see what we can do with this gem. Um, so uh, first of all, we can maybe uh, collect some metrics from, uh, um, well, Rails has an internal event system that will uh, uh, measure the time it takes to do some, some, some operations like uh, render the templates or Create the factories, for example, here. Um, so let's say what let's see what happens if I set this variable running the tests. So uh, what was the name? E event prof, yeah. So event prof, yeah. Uh, <coughs> let's take the system test that we had before. System um, book, su book suggestion. And well, what it will tell us, it will, it, it, this one won't test, tell us much, but it's very simple to, to get started with. Um, so it tells us we spent one second on uh, creating uh, just for the factories. And I mean, the overall time is three seconds. So you can already see one third is spent on, on creating models which is already a good indicator, but okay, let's dig deeper. We can use a flame graph for our factories. Uh, who here is familiar with flame graph in general? Yeah, good. Uh, I have one for the factories. So if I run it with, uh, what was it? Fprof. After film graph. So if I run it with this, um, it will generate a flame graph or just of the factories. And I can open EMP test prof factory flame. And well, you see here, so I'm creating a user and I'm creating a book. 
But when I'm creating a book, what happens? I'm creating also a user and some review. And then book, user, review, book, user, and so on. So if I hover it, it will tell me, for example, here, user. I created here four users, but in total I created 77 users for just a couple of tests. Uh, here on the root, I, I see, okay, overall I created 153 uh, objects. And for the book, uh, so we, we required initially four books, but overall we had 40, so 10 times as much. And why is that? So let's go check our uh, factories. Spec factory. Uh, let's take the book. So we see here that our book creates three views and the user. And the, for the reviews, it creates a list of reviews between five and ten, right? And then if so let's let's check the spec factories review what happens there is that i'm also creating a book and the user again so you can see how here in this project i have only three entities i have the user i have the book and i have the review that's the only three models i have and already i'm i i, I was capable of creating more than a hundred and, and whatever in uh, a couple of tests. So uh, it's very easy for this to happen in a complex project where you don't really have maybe not so clear anymore what all the relationships are between all the models. And if you do these kind of mistakes in your factories, well, it can add up quite, quite easily. And luckily, this is very easy to fix. So if we take, for example, the book, uh, we can say, okay, instead of creating the user, by the way, this, this way of doing also is, is very bad because if I do a build stub, for example, or a build, it will also create a user, even though I don't want to create the entity. Um, the way to do it is to say association user, yeah, and and factory bot will take care of creating or stubbing or whatever it needs to do with the user. Association. Luckily, we have tests. Um, also, for the reviews, I would say here it's wrong that we create reviews by default. I would. We have a trait here without reviews. And I had to create that actually, I didn't want to, but I had to create that because then if, if I didn't put this one in the review, um, it would go in a loop and uh, create a book, create a review, create a book, create a review and whatever. And it would uh, just not work. So I had to do this. But uh, the purpose, of course, was to show you what, what happens if you're not very careful about that. And so I would do the opposite. I would, I would say, with reviews and in that case i would do association review so i think um and this way also it will automatically uh, create the reviews now you might wonder how do i say hey i want five reviews um without using the, the the stuff i used before right that i i used uh i took uh here uh, an array basically from five to ten and a random value from there um the way to do it would be to use a transient property so uh factory bot has something like transient uh and you have to give it a name i can't remember the syntax i didn't try it out but basically you you will say number of reviews for example and then this becomes like a parameter you can give to uh to your uh, your factory and uh, you can use that uh, to create this number of reviews in here 
and um, yes so um, so if I do this with reviews and if I look for uh, so I look without reviews where it's used so we have here I can say I can remove it and here as well I can change the user association so association user and well let's try now I don't know if I have other errors but let, let's see if something's changed also if the tests work <laughs> So okay, it's not not bad. We have the time. We have five seconds now, and if I look at the rep report again, ah, much better, right? I don't create reviews anymore because I don't actually need them. Um, I still have maybe too many users and too many books. That's because I also added some other mistakes in in there. But overall, it's good. Um, so I wanted also to see now there were some other things. Uh, yes, so what if you want what if you want a flame graph of the code that is actually running? You can also do that. So we have the factory flame graph. But maybe you want to actually see where the code is spending time because maybe you want to find the slowness in the application itself. You can do that as well. And <coughs> so here you just go into the, you have to add another gem. It's called stack prof. And if you run it with and what was it test stack prof row yeah system tests again uh what it will do it will collect all the all the information about uh, the things that have been run and it will tell me here in the end uh the commands to generate my flame graph so i will just copy them uh. I hate trackpads. Okay. So, okay, this will generate an HTML file. What did I do? Okay. And then I have the other command here to open actually the flame graph in the browser. So um, one defect of this uh, gem, I hate touchpads, really. Uh, okay. Uh, yes, one problem with uh, this gem is that this flame graph is um, very heavy and will on basically only work on Chrome. Um, so, Firefox users, sorry. Oh God. Maybe. So let's go here. Okay. So you see, it's very slow. It could use some profiling. <laughs> so uh, yes, and you have the flame graph of your application. You can well zoom into the parts you're interested in, uh, which is very difficult to do with a touchpad. But believe me, <laughs> okay, you you can actually zoom in and uh, uh, check what is the big thing that is taking your time. Um, of course, this this is already starts to be more advanced stuff. Because reading a flame graph is well not not so easy, not always so easy. Um, but if you need to, you have it. 
you have this and well I'm not showing every tool that you have in this jam because you have many of them and it's well documented on how to use them but it's just to give an idea of the kind of stuff it adds um, yes so uh, I also want to talk about other possible solutions to, to problems you can have in tests. So we talked about, you know, having too many tests and with only one expectation in it, which can be bad in the case of uh, system tests, inter integration tests, end-to-end -end tests, how you want to call them. And um, so you can do actually set form uh, where you don't don't have all the uh, setup process that is done th three times, you do it only once. And um, what's important is here this flag aggregate failures. We, I didn't know about it until I I, I read about it. <laughs> and um, what this will do is basically it will tell you all the failures because normally when you do this, if you have a problem, let's say here. It will not tell you if this other test is, is correct or not. And it will only f f stop at the first failure. With this one, it will do all the expectations and tell you which ones pass and which ones don't. <coughs> um, very often, view tests can replace system feature tests. Uh, I can actually show you an example. And... Uh, it's it's here actually in the book suggestion. If we look at it, what are we doing in this test? So we are creating a list of books. We are doing this ugly thing in here, and we uh, check that the title and the author is contained in the page. You don't need a system test to do that. You can do it in a view test, and you don't. If you do it in a view test, the, the beautiful thing about a view test is that. Uh, spec view books index, for example, is that you just assign the variable that is going to be used in the, in the template, and it will just compile the template and test on the template whatever you want to to see. So, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. So here also, you don't need to create a list of fifteen books. You can just build stopped a book and it will work or a list and it will work as uh, just as well so build stub list and yeah if we run our test uh, spec view uh, books index it should just run as well as before. And we didn't create a single uh, model. Well, actually, we did create the user because I didn't change that one, but uh, you get my point. I don't need to actually save on the database to test, to test the view. OK, sometimes maybe you want to test uh, if the controller actually does something, uh, like filters out some results or stuff like that. And in that case, a system test makes sense, but only with a very small data set that will uh, apply to that to the to, to the case you want to test. You don't need to create long lists. Uh, you can actually also test. This, um, yeah, the, the, sometimes the problem is if you want to test pagination, uh, and you have to find a way of of doing that. And uh, on the view, you cannot because the pagination is done in the controller and not in the template. Um, Yes. Other suggestions. So optimizing for, for speed is potentially never ending. Uh, you're never done, but you will have to stop at, at some point. So th the first suggestion is take the big easy wins first. You know, go check whatever is taking you a huge amount of time and fix that first. That already will improve your situation. Maybe it will not be optimal, but it will be much better. I mean, we changed two things and our tests already run in five seconds, right? Um, know how to measure efficiently, because uh, unless it's very obvious, sometimes it, it, becomes, it can, be, can be very difficult to understand where the problem lies. And if you don't have good tools to measure, 
it's it's almost impossible to figure it out. If you know how to use them, you have a good chance of finding out your bottleneck or whatever the problem is. So keep an eye on the slower test. So um, it's not like you will spend, I don't know, two days on uh, improving the test. You probably you will just keep working on your project. Uh, but while you work on it, keep an eye on wh which tests are slowing you down always. And well, maybe some from time to time, try to fix those one at a time. Yeah, improve step by step, little by little. That's how you gain performance. It's not by doing a huge amount of work at all at once. It's by doing it continuously. Thank you. That's all. If you have questions, um, we are recording the talk. Uh, the code is online and the slides also will be available. In the meantime, if you have questions, I'm glad to answer them. Also on Twitter. Any performance uh, testing tools can uh, recommend? Um, like you said, performance monitoring. Yes, uh, there's not a lot. There is a gem. Um, can't remember the name right now, but there is a gem that is for performance testing, and that will basically you you set like a, a maximum value for I don't know responding to a request, and it will fail if it goes over that value. That is possible. Uh, my experience is that th these kind of tests are also quite difficult to write or quite difficult to maintain consistent. Um, so yes, it's possible, but it, it, it is something, keep in mind, it's something that will cost you a lot. So unless you really need it, uh, I would avoid it. What? I'm sorry? Measuring the timestamp between the beginning and the end of the test. Uh, um, well, y you have that already in uh, RSpec. It, it does that. Yeah, it tells you which test. Well, it tells you which tests are, are slow. It don't tell, doesn't tell you for every test. But I mean, that's more than enough. You don't care about the tests well, that are you fast. Want to file it further uh, well, uh, you can run just that test and it will show up in the list. If you select just that test to run, it will it will show up in the test of the slowest test because there's one test. <laughs> so y yes, you can you can do that. Uh, the other gem I was talking about is is it's, it's more meant like uh, my search page on my website has to respond within 200 milliseconds, for example, because that's a hard requirement that we have from management or whatever, and so it will test that kind of thing. But there are so many reasons that tests can fail that it's some, I mean, it's quite expensive to keep it green. So unless it's really, really mission critical, I wouldn't do this kind of tests. I wouldn't abuse them. Have you worked with parallel tests? Parallel tests, you mean? It's a sweet gem. I, I'm a cheater, right? Everything uh, you said is perfect, yeah. and uh, you can bring it down orders of magnitude, you should do it properly. But uh, this machine has so many cores that Ruby doesn't use, Yeah. and uh, our specs should all be totally immutable and separate, right? yeah. so we can actually split them up in different groups yeah. and run them in parallel, yeah. and there's a gem for that. Test. Yeah, so we we did um, not you not I don't think we used that gem, but we uh, actually um, used the feature on uh, Semaphore that will uh, will run the tests in parallel. Yep. The only problem is then you forget about the coverage, and since in all our projects we set uh, a hard rule about the minimum coverage, uh, basically we can't do that. But of course, if it's also true that our projects generally run in less than five minutes. So if your project is much bigger and we're talking about 30 minutes of runtime, maybe you might consider, okay, maybe I'm okay in lowering and giving, uh, giving up the coverage thingy and uh, instead focus on parallelizing those tests. Yeah, absolutely.
but first check if if your tests are are okay sometimes yes it's it's so hard to improve them that it's actually better to split them in, and run them in parallel uh, I really meant leaving the tests as the, they are. Yeah. It really does chunks of the existing tests. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it runs R spec multiple times in parallel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Databases. Yeah, yeah. So your your test coverage doesn't change. Tests don't change. Uh, I know that the it's coverage like, uh, doesn't change, but the tool to that measures the coverage cannot uh, ah. cannot sum them. You know, that's well, that that's yes, that's the problem. Okay, yeah, the p the coverage yes is the same, but if you are not running in them all together, yeah, no, no, sure, 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 absolutely, yes. Yeah. What we did that worked very well with the very few efforts to separate feature tests from unit tests. Yeah. Yeah. Because feature tests don't contribute anyway to coverage. So, I mean, they can. But also, separate tests. Yeah. So. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Very Thank much you. Again.